Hello and welcome on behalf of Moorville and Bridge North Parishes to this our virtual worship on the third Sunday of Trinity. You are really welcome. We continue with our sermon series of the five key events of Jesus' life which form the basis of our Christian faith. And this week we are reflecting on the horrific death of Jesus on Good Friday. The significance of which is that it points to our story of hope. In this time of lockdown, we have had little choice but to do as we are called and let go of our normal lives. It is in the letting go and surrendering to God that we too can know the beauty of resurrection. As lockdown continues to ease, let us together reflect on what it means for each of us individually and for our churches to step into living with resurrection power. And so as we prepare ourselves for this time of worship, let us pray. Dear God, thank you that you make all things new. Thank you for the victory and power in your name. We come to you ready to confess where we have failed and to accept your renewing of our hearts, minds and lives for the days ahead. Thank you, Father. Help us to hear your words. Speak into our unique situations, we pray, that we would be equipped to go out into the world trusting in you and with resurrection power to be agents of your kingdom and shining as your lights. To your glory and in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray with the Anglican Communion across the world, gathering our thoughts together and our prayers in the words of the Collect. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. We confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are truly sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
this morning. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided, through the foolishness of our proclamation, to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel is taken from John, chapter 12, starting to read at verse 27. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, The voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The crowd spoke up. We have heard from the law that the Messiah will remain forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus told them, You are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they're going. Believe in the light while you have the light so that you may become children of light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. This is the Gospel of Christ. Today we look at the second of the five events that shaped Christianity, the crucifixion of Jesus. It seems strange that we as Christians celebrate the fact that Jesus died a shameful, painful death. Our Gospel reading even treats Jesus' forthcoming death as his glorification when he's going to be lifted up, drawing all people to himself, judging the world, defeating the ruler of this world, Satan. An agonising death of a man abandoned by his friends, one of his best friends denying that he even knew him, and another of his friends betraying him. And yet it's depicted as a great victory. No wonder Paul says that human wisdom can't understand it. In the world's eyes, if we proclaim Christ crucified, it seems nonsense, a stumbling block to Jews, because the Jewish law puts a curse on anyone who's hanged on a tree, and that couldn't apply to God's Messiah, could it? And folly to Greeks. 
to human philosophers, human wisdom, this victory through death on a cross makes no sense at all. So how do we make sense of it? Is it an example of self-giving love that we are to follow? Well, yes, certainly Jesus' death on the cross is the supreme example of self-giving love. And Jesus does command us to love one another as he has loved us. So perhaps the cross is there to inspire us to acts of love. But on the other hand, when we look at ourselves, we look at the world around us, faced with that supreme example of self-giving love before us. Doesn't that drive us more to despair? as we become aware of how far we sh fall short of Christ's love. Perhaps then, the point of Christ's death on the cross is to make us look at ourselves. But what if we don't like what we see there? We like to justify ourselves to think we're not all bad. We don't like to think that our situation is so bad that nothing but the death of Christ on the cross can save us. And so that's a big area in which human wisdom can obscure the meaning of the cross for us. Popular theology can be a two-edged sword. At its best, popular theology can just be telling us God's truth in terms we can grasp. But on the other hand, popular theology can be just that. Pop theology trying to be popular. Human wisdom trying to reduce God's mystery to something acceptable to us. I recently saw a video of the popular theologian Richard Raw, and he started off marvellously. He was saying how the persons of the Trinity are like a water wheel pouring forth love, love flowing from one person to another, and that love overflowing to creation. But then he spoiled it all when he said, when you have a Trinitarian theology, there's no room for wrath in God. Contrasting God's love with God's wrath and assuming that if God is perfect love, then he can't have any wrath. And so there's no need for damnation, punishment or atonement. But if that's the case, that God just loves us, why the cross? There's no room for wrath in God, we say. Really? If you just look at something that's happened recently, that's given rise to a lot of human wrath, the death of George Floyd. A lot of people are angry about his unjust death. And do you really think that God doesn't mind? And when you look around at all the injustice, violence and crime and poverty by which humans inflict unjust suffering on each other. Do you really think that God doesn't mind? 
Or perhaps you think it just makes him sad, but otherwise he's not particularly bothered because he just loves us anyway. But what if God's wrath is not contrary to his love, but is in fact an expression of his love? He loves his creation. And so his wrath is kindled when we make a mess of it. He loves his creatures. And so his wrath is kindled when we treat each other unjustly. Maybe the reason why human wisdom doesn't like the idea of God's wrath is that perhaps in the back of our minds, if we're re really honest with ourselves, we sense that we deserve it. How much more comfortable is the idea of a loving God as an indulgent blancmange who just accepts us as we are without the need for a cross? If you deny the wrath of God, you're also denying the love of God and you're dispensing with the need for the cross. But the cross changes all that. Jesus on the cross draws all people to himself to see our sins mirrored in their consequences for him. Now is the world judged, Jesus says, because we're brought face to face with ourselves as we really are and challenged as to what we will make of Jesus Christ. Because it was our sin that brought him to that cross if God were just an indulgent blamange, if our sins didn't outrage God's perfect justice, his perfect love for his injured creation, there'd be no need for the cross. And if God didn't love us in spite of our offences against him, there would be no cross. Because the cross is the supreme expression of God's love, God's Trinitarian love, where God himself, God himself, not some innocent third party, not some cosmic child abuse, as another popular theologian puts it, but God himself, bearing the fullness of our nature, took upon himself the full weight of human suffering and the dark abyss of human death, identifying himself with sinful humanity and bearing, as God himself made man, the full force of God's just wrath against sin, so that that wrath was fully satisfied, the price of sin fully paid, making satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. Paid. Satisfied. He took upon himself that curse of the law that makes the cross a stumbling block for Jews. He took upon himself the curse so that we wouldn't have to bear it. He bore our sins so that we might be clothed with his righteousness through faith in his blood shed for us. The ruler of this world, the Satan, the accuser, has nothing left to accuse us of. All accusations are fully satisfied. The accuser has no more power over us. Death 
which was the first consequence of our disobedience, is defeated because Christ has died our death and risen again. Christ has conquered, and we who believe in him share his victory. We were unable to turn back to God, unable to please him, unable to do anything to save ourselves. But Christ saves us on the cross, reconciling us to God, so that God the Holy Spirit can enter into us and change us from within. We were bought with the price of Jesus' blood, set free to live for him. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Amen. Standing in the church of St Peter's, Monk Hopton, we use one of the oldest statements of faith written by Paul in the letter to the Philippians to affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though Jesus was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we come before God, we want to give thanks and make our request known to him. At the end of each prayer, I will say, Father of all, and you may wish to respond, hear our prayer. We give thanks, almighty God, that you created us in your own image and you are mindful of all that you have made. Forgive us when we're so easily distracted by our day-to-day -day lives and become sidetracked from the work of the cross. Thank you, Father, that you so loved the world, that you gave your only Son, that whoever ever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We are today reminded again of the pain and suffering of the cross and all that Jesus willingly endured so that we could be set free from the power of sin. He paid the price. We thank you that it is by grace that we've been saved through faith. It's not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Father of all, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for our own country and community, and in particular we pray for the Queen, our Head of State and her family. We want to lift the UK to you as we struggle in the face of COVID-19. The impact that that's had on our society, our economy and mental health. As we face Brexit and all the big decisions that need to be made. As we struggle with racism and our response to it. Lord, how we need your help. We pray for the Prime Minister and the Cabinet and that politicians will be able to work together. We ask Sovereign God that you will give wisdom, integrity and grace to those who lead our government that they will listen, respect others, and see people through your eyes. Father of all, hear our prayer. We pray for Bishop Richard as he seeks to further God's kingdom here in Shropshire. We pray too for the Bridge North and Morville Parishes team ministry. We in particular want to bring them before you as they plan for the reopening of churches in this area. We give thanks for technology, but we do yearn for face-to-face -face fellowship. Father of all, hear our prayer. Lord, you promised to be a refuge for your people in time of trouble. Look with compassion, we pray, on all those people of the world who are so cruelly and incompetently governed that they can only flee 
abandoning all that they have or are unable to find health care or treatment for COVID-19. We pray in particular for countries in South America such as Brazil who seem to be moving towards the peak of their outbreak. Father, please intervene in that situation. Father of all, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all the families represented here today. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful and to reassure those who are moving out of isolation or shielding. Lord, give us the grace to walk by faith and through every storm of life to keep our gaze fixed on you and know your peace. We pray for the sick, both at home, in hospital and in a hospice. We pray too for those who've lost someone they love. Be their comforter in their grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so, dear friends, as we go out into the world, prepared to be a Christian presence ministering to others, we ask for God's blessing. May the strength of God drive us. May the power of God preserve us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. And may the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. And may the shield of God defend us. May the host of God guard us against the snares of the evil ones, against temptations of the world. May Christ be with us. May Christ be before us. May Christ be in us. Christ be over all. May thy salvation, Lord, always be ours. This day, O Lord, and evermore. Amen. As we end this virtual time together, regardless of what time you watched it, we thank you so much for joining in with us in fellowship and in prayer. And if you are joining on Sunday morning and would like to reflect more or just have fellowship and company together, do join us for our virtual coffee morning from 11.15 onwards. Just drop me a message, Kate King, or on this page, and I'll make sure that you've got the um, access. And just to emphasise, if you don't have Zoom or online, you can ring in by telephone. So if you know anyone that doesn't have online access and would really like to have that conversation and fellowship, just put them in touch with me um, and I can help get them connected in. Go well, be blessed and stay safe this week. God bless you.